the charm, the charisma, the gentle spirit. Whoever had the opportunity to meet Buck O'Neill. Good to be around you, man. Hey, you still feel good. No, I just know when to flex, so you can touch when I flex. <laughs> the lives were likely changed from a chance encounter with this great ambassador. I develop passionate love for this man. I think he's one of the most amazing human beings to ever walk the face of this earth who just happened to be a great baseball player. Buck O'Neill was a tremendous first baseman for the legendary Kansas City Monarchs. He became a great leader of men, which is why he became such a successful manager, player manager with the Monarchs. After his Monarchs playing career ended, Buck O'Neill would move into Major League Baseball as a scout. He is credited with having signed Ernie Banks to become the Cubs' first black player. He also signed Lou Brock with the Chicago Cubs, Lee Arthur Smith to his first professional contract with the Cubs. So Buck has three Hall of Famers that he signed. And while he didn't sign Hall of Famer Billy Williams, he is credited for having kept Mr. Williams in the game because Billy Williams had quit the Cubs and gone home, and who did the Cubs send to go get him? Buck O'Neill. And Mr. Williams would be the first to tell you that he owes his Hall of Fame career to one Buck O'Neill. And then Buck would then become the first African-American coach in Major League Baseball history, 1962, with the Chicago Cubs. You can feel his spirit when you come here to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. There would not be a Negro Leagues Baseball Museum if it was not for the tireless leadership of Buck O'Neill. <laughs> I affectionately call the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum the house that Buck built. Back in 2006, when we were waiting on the announcement to see if Buck was going to be one of that group of Negro League players who were being voted on who would be inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. He missed by one vote. I was just devastated. Who handled it better than everyone? Buck O'Neill. Buck O'Neill would push aside his disappointment, go to Cooperstown, deliver this impassioned speech on behalf of 17 others who had gotten in, but all of them were dead. And who became their voice? Negro League Baseball. All you needed was a bus, yeah, and a couple of sets of uniform. You could have 20 of the best athletes that ever lived. And that's who we are representing here today. And I say that it was one of the most selfless acts in American sports history. Whoever's next to you, hold a hand. Come on, you Hall of Famers. Hold hands. All you people out there, hold hands. I want you to sing after me. The greatest thing in all of my life is loving you. A little over two months later. The greatest thing, my friend, and all of my life passed away himself. Is loving you. As he would call Cooperstown the valley, you just kind of got an idea that the valley will be lit up with the spirit of Buck O'Neill when he does finally receive the official induction into a place that he loved the National Baseball Hall of Fame. 